Hogwarts Legacy has some truly amazing spells, a talent tree to make a lot of them even stronger, and quite a few builds that are ridiculously powerful. So today we're ranking every spell in the game, from the essential spells to the utility, room of requirement spells, and even the unforgivable curses. No, this is not another tier list video. We'll have to make some really tough decisions along the way because there can only be one to claim the top spot on our list. Let's start things off at the bottom, number 34, and we have the Beast Petting Brush. And no, it's not that I don't love the magical beasts in the game, because I absolutely do, but it's the fact that the brush takes up a spot in our slottable spell list, and you only have a maximum of 16 slots available, even when you're fully upgraded. Not to mention the fact that it's not really even a spell, and it can only be used in the Room of Requirement. So with these first few spells here, you're going to see a common theme, because there are a handful here that, to me, it seems like they could have been contextual only. Certainly not spells to take up a slot on our spell diamond that could otherwise be used for more combat or puzzle-oriented spells. At number 33, we have the Beast Feed Utility, and I gave this one a spot above the brush because you'll eventually unlock feeders that you can use inside the vivariums, so you'll actually never need to slot this one again unless you just want to manually feed one of your magical beasts. Mostly, though, this one has the same problems as the Beast Brush before it. All right, for the next three, 32, 31, and 30, we have the Transfiguration Spells for Altering, Conjuring, and the Vanishing Spell, Evanesco. I I rate these just above the beast ones because they actually are spells, and I do love the fact that our character has their wand out as they're performing these actions. The animations are also absolutely fantastic. Look like they were right out of the movie. And each spell does what it's intended to do. Unfortunately though, like the beast spells, there's really no need to have these taking up valuable slots in our spell diamond because the only place they can be used, again, is here in the Room of Requirement. I love the fact that they're spells, and again, the animations are great, but it would be nice if they belonged to a different set and only showed up when you're inside the Room of Requirement. Number 29, the Knapsack. This one gets a slight bump over the others because it actually is something that you'll use out in the open world of Hogwarts Legacy. This charm bag is how you will rescue and hold magical bees that you find when you're out exploring. I think maybe there could have been a better way to map this one in game so it didn't have to take up one of the slottable spells. Maybe just another contextual prompt when, say, you're locked onto a nearby magical beast. Would that have worked? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not a game dev, but anything to free up more spell slots I think would have been nice. All right, so the beast and transfiguration spells are out of the way. Now we start to move into the more conventional spells of the game, and at number 28, we have Reparo, which allows you to quickly return certain damaged objects to their former state. The spell itself, it's actually awesome. The animations are great when you're repairing, but it's just so sparingly used in the game that it's hard for me to rank it much higher. Usually, it's a very specific instance where a puzzle or mission requires you to repair a specific object in the game. Not always, but that is what I found more often than not. Moving on to number 27, we have the Basic Cast. This is one of the first spells you learn in the game, and fortunately, it does not take up a slot in the spell diamond. You can also spam this one as many times as you want, no cooldown. The spell itself does do minor damage to most enemies, but its most important function is to keep your combo meter going, and even juggling enemies as you wait for your more powerful spells to become available after their cooldowns. All right, now at this point, we have to start making some really tough decisions. Guys, truth be told, many of the spells ahead can actually be very useful in the right context and made even more powerful with certain talent upgrades and gear traits. These are really ranked how I like to play the game and what worked best for me, so don't get too angry. I know you guys are going to let me know in the comments either way, though, how much you love or hate my list. But at number 26, we have what is arguably the most iconic spell from the old school Harry Potter games, and that is Flippendo! Absolutely love that they put Flipendo in as a nod to the previous games in the series. In Hogwarts Legacy, this is yet another wonderful example of fan service, and the spell even functions similar to how it did back then. The only problem here is that it's far outclassed by many of the other spells in the game. And even though we start the game as a fifth year, we become very powerful very quickly in this game. Working in its favor, though, Flipendo does have a very short cooldown and can be particularly helpful against the burrowing spiders and trolls right after they slam their clubs. Next on our list at number 25, we have the essential spell Alohomora, which will grant access to a variety of locked rooms and loot chests throughout the world of Hogwarts Legacy. The spell does belong in the essential category. I certainly agree with that. You'll absolutely need the most basic version of the spell and even the tier two and tier three versions if you want to unlock everything in the game. Even in its most upgraded form, however, Alohomora is not an instant unlock. You'll need to complete a lockpicking minigame every time you use the spell, and while I initially was not a fan of this minigame, it's grown on me somewhat over time. I can usually knock these out pretty quickly. Our next spell comes
Coming in at number 24 is one of the classics from the series, Wingardium Leviosa. Not to be confused with Levioso, despite what you guys keep telling me in the comments, we'll get to that one shortly. Wingardium Leviosa levitates and controls a movable object, and it works very well, pretty much does exactly what it says. While there are occasions where you may not be able to move an object that you think you should be able to move, for the most part, this one works as expected. It doesn't really factor into combat much, unless, that is, you want to levitate objects and then bash them into foes, which actually does quite a bit of damage, believe it or not. But there's another spell coming up on our list that basically removes the need of you ever needing to slot Wingardium Leviosa on its own. And we'll get to that one momentarily. For number 23, though, it's the control spell Arresto Momentum. This one will slow both objects, so it can be helpful with certain puzzles, as well as enemies. Arresto can be really useful in the middle of a hectic battle, especially if you want to slow or stop a target while dealing with other minor enemies in the area. It's also good at making it easier to catch magical creatures in the knapsack because you can slow them before trying to capture. Or rescue, I mean. All right, I have a feeling the next one here might be a bit controversial, but I'm going to rank Incendio at number 22. Okay, look, I actually used Incendio quite a bit through my first playthrough. Fire spells, definitely, definitely important, especially for dealing with spiders and Inferi. My biggest issue with Incendio, though, is that it's very short range, and that's just not how I like to play this game. To be fair, the upgrade is nice because it will cast a circle of flames out around you. That's really useful if you're getting swarmed by a group of enemies. I just never felt like it was doing all that much damage, even though the description says the spell did deals significant damage. Look, I still think it's useful overall, but there's another fire spell that I prefer. Again, works better from range, and we'll see that here a bit later on the list. At number 21, though, we have another iconic spell from the Potter series, and it's Lumos, which will let you see in dark areas or solve puzzles that require extra light. Now, if we were just ranking on sound effects alone, Lumos would have to be number one, because they have absolutely nailed that instantly recognizable sound from the movies. Lumos. It sounds just so perfect here, and the visual effects look really nice too. The Force Spell Depulso is at number 20 on our list, and it's funny, this one falls in the Force category because it draws so many comparisons to the Force Push ability from Star Wars, and it's very similar. The spell itself actually does no direct damage. However, enemies and objects can both be launched into each other with destructive results, or you can just launch enemies off the side of a cliff. It's also quite useful in many of the game's puzzles. Bombarda takes the number 19 spot, and this spell deals heavy damage on impact and all also includes an explosion that can destroy heavy obstacles and even hit surrounding enemies. Okay, Bombarda would probably rank higher on my list if it did fire damage as well, but if you cast a spell on something like an Inferius, you'll notice it doesn't do any damage at all, which indicates there's no fire damage being inflicted here. The Bombarda Mastery Talent upgrade will enable an explosive blast with an even greater area of effect. It's also a nice one to blast off at red barrels to get a massive explosion. Just don't get too close. Coming in at number 18, we have the Four Spell Descend which again, won't do any direct damage. However, if you're able to slam enemies into the ground, they will take damage from the impact. Previously airborne enemies, such as those who may be levitating with Levioso, will take even greater damage when they hit the ground. Descendo is also a great setup spell. It throws enemies off balance before you hit them with another more powerful spell. Very versatile, great combo starter as well. Now that other spell that we just mentioned, Levioso, it's number 17 on our list. This control spell levitates both enemies and objects, but not to be confused with Wingardium Leviosa, it does not allow movement of the objects once they're levitating. Levioso is used very frequently in many of the game's puzzles and can help you reach higher areas by hovering blocks, which you can then climb to reach new areas. It's also perfect for juggling and maybe the best setup spell for combos in the whole game. Once you have an enemy levitating, they're really at your mercy until the effect wears off. The Levioso Mastery Talent even lets you levitate multiple enemies at the same time if they're in close proximity. Now, if you're a fan of stealth, then number 16 is absolutely vital for you, and it's the Disillusionment Charm, which causes you to blend into your surroundings and makes it difficult for others to detect you. It's not total invisibility like Harry's Cloak, but it's perfect for sneaking up or approaching enemies undetected. You can even skip huge areas of enemies taking advantage of this charm. It becomes even more powerful if you pursue upgrades in the stealth talent tree. I think the biggest knock for me here, though, is that I just love the combat so much more than stealth in this game, which normally is not the way I like to play games. I usually love stealth, but here the combat is so fun, I really just don't find myself caring about stealth that much. And that takes us to number 15, where we have my favorite fire spell in the game, Confringo. I prefer this one to Incendio, primarily because of its range and the talent upgrade for this 
this one is awesome. Confrinko is a long range bolt of fire that will deal damage on impact. As long as the enemies remain on fire, any subsequent hits on the enemy will result in incendiary bursts. The Confringo mastery talent though takes this to a whole nother level. With this unlocked, any Confringo impact will produce fiery bolts that seek out other enemy targets. To me, Confringo is also more useful for puzzles because you can have more accuracy by lining up the spell with a left trigger and you can do it from a pretty decent range as well. Harry Potter himself may disagree with this next one being so low, but for Hogwarts Legacy, I'm ranking Expelliarmus at number 14 on our list. Look, everybody knows this was Harry's go-to spell throughout the original series, and admittedly, it saved his life on more than one occasion. It's also pretty strong here in Hogwarts Legacy and can take certain enemies out of the battle for a moment, forcing them to stop and retrieve their wands before being able to cast again. It doesn't only disarm those with wands, however. It will also rip weapons away from most other standard enemies in the game. And on top of that, it deals damage to all enemy types, even if they don't carry weapons. So you don't have to limit the use of Expelliarmus to only armed enemies. It works on creatures as well. Okay, look, the spell is already strong on its own, but there's even a Dark Arts Talent Tree upgrade that will also give it the curse-inducing effect. And any enemies that are cursed take even more damage. Now, speaking of curses and the Dark Arts, at lucky number 13, we have our first unforgivable curse on the list, and it's Crucio. This spell will cause most enemies to writhe in pain, taking damage over time and places the cursed status effect on enemies. Another ability of the spell is to break through any shield type, and this is going to be true for all of the unforgivable curses. Really, the only thing holding Crucio back is the fact that it doesn't work on enemies like Inferi or the Enchanted Knights as they cannot feel pain. Make no mistake though, Crucio is really powerful, and when used in conjunction with other options that take advantage of this curse effect, it can be tremendously useful in battle. As powerful as the Unforgivables are though, don't sleep on another late game spell, the Transformation Control spell, which comes in at number 12 on our list. I'll be honest, at first I did not appreciate the power of the spell. It will transform objects and enemies into alternate forms, whether puzzle solutions or harmless knickknacks. The effect does not last forever though, and the enemies will eventually turn back to normal. There are also stronger enemies in the game where the spell really won't have any effect. You'll only unlock the ultimate power of this spell if you go into the Spells Talent Tree and use the final upgrade there, which changes everything. This talent upgrade will change a key aspect of the spell, and that is by transforming enemies into explosive objects instead of harmless knickknacks. And once you transform an enemy into an explosive barrel, you can almost always get two immediate KOs by using the ancient magic throw prompt that appears when the enemy is transformed. So you destroy the enemy that you just changed into the explosive barrel, as well as the enemy or group of enemies getting hit by the barrel. It doesn't stop there though. Even though the spell does not appear anywhere under the dark arts talent tree, if you have a few different cursed enemies on the battlefield, and then you cast this spell on one of them, you can get an instant KO on all of them at once. There are also some pretty humorous uses for this spell as well. But I won't spoil them all here. Why don't you just try and see how many different things in the game that you can cast this transformation spell on. And that takes us to number 11, just outside the top 10, we have Glacius. The only reason Glacius is not even higher on the list is because on its own, it really doesn't do much. It's really a setup spell, and it is absolutely my favorite setup spell in the game. It will freeze enemies in their tracks, and while frozen, they'll take even more damage. This is the main reason that I prefer it to Arresto Momentum, even though it does not have the Dark Arts Curse option like Arresto. Then there's also the talent upgrade for Glacius. This one falls under the Spells talent tree. I absolutely think it's worth it. Glacius Mastery will give you a blast of damaging ice shards anytime you strike an enemy that's been frozen by Glacius. So you can start imagining some of the incredible combos you can do using Glacius as your setup. In fact, my absolute favorite combo in the game is anything that ends with Glacius followed by the number 10 spell on our list, Defendo. This damage spell slashes objects and enemies from afar and deals considerable damage. This is one on our list that really isn't made that much better by its talent upgrade, which grants Defendo the ability to slice through additional targets if they're in close proximity to one another. But Defendo is just really powerful on its own right out of the gate. You can use Levioso on a dog bog at just the right time to levitate them by their tongue and then cast Defendo for an instant KO even on the game's hardest difficulty. And then the combo I mentioned, Glacius into Defendo, guys. There's a complete set of different ways that you can do this using other spells like Expelliarmus, Descendo, even Accio for absolutely devastating results. 
For number nine, we have another one for stealth fans out there, and it's Petrificus Totalis. Now, to be totally honest with you here, as I mentioned before, I love the combat so much in this game, I almost always prefer that over the stealth. As a spell, though, I have to give Petrificus Totalis its due, because when used in conjunction with the Disillusionment Charm, it's really potent, mainly because it's an instant takedown on most of the normal enemies in the game. You can even make things much easier for yourself in a battle if you first go around and kind of thin out the field by quietly taking out a few enemies with stealth. You can also use Petrificus Totalis a immediately after Glacius or Arresto Momentum, but only if you aren't being detected by other enemies. At number eight, it's time for our second unforgivable curse, and here we have Imperio. This spell will temporarily force enemies to fight as if they were your companion. They'll take reduced damage from other enemies, but also take on the curse status effect, which means they'll take more damage from you when you're finished and ready to dispose of them. What's insane about Imperio is that you can use it on some of the tougher enemies in the game, like trolls, which can really help out a ton with crowd control. Not only that, there's a talent upgrade where an enemy under your control with Imperio will actually curse other targets with each successful strike. There's really no doubt about it, guys. In Hogwarts Legacy, the Unforgivables, they're incredibly powerful. I mean, I say that as someone who played through my first playthrough not using any Unforgivables outside the Dark Arts Battle Arena, but the truth is the truth, guys. They are ridiculously powerful and they give you the opportunity to set up some truly amazing builds. At number seven on our list, though, it's actually an essential spell here called the Ancient Magic Throw, which was previously referred to as a Pugno before the devs opted to tie this spell to our Ancient Magic ability instead. This spell summons objects and then throws the objects at targeted enemies. It's very useful for breaking through shield charms without having to worry about matching the correct color shield. The Ancient Magic Throw is vital to anyone who wants to master the combat in Hogwarts Legacy. It does a great amount of damage and works so well with the other spells in the game, like the Transformation spell. It also has no cooldown, doesn't take up a slot in your spell diamond, and it's really only limited by the amount of throwable objects around you. But again, when you pair this with the Transfiguration spell, you can really maximize and use it to its full potential. I also highly recommend the Ancient Magic Throw Expertise Talent, which is under the core talent tree. Having this gives you the ability to perform what is absolutely my favorite thing to do with the combat in the whole game, and that is to use a disarmed enemy's weapon and send it hurtling back toward them. It's part of the reason those enchanted knights are some of my favorite enemies in the game to fight, because you can use this spell quite often against them. Up next, and arguably the most important spell for puzzle solving in the game, we have the summoning charm, Accio. Accio can summon a variety of objects and enemies to close range, so it ends up being very useful in both puzzles and combat. What makes it even more helpful for puzzle solving, though, is also the fact that it has the ability to automatically cast Wingardium Leviosa once you've unlocked that spell. So remember when we ranked Wingardium earlier, I said there was no need to actually slot it? Well, it's because Accio will automatically cast Wingardium Leviosa. It even says it in the description here, so it's definitely intended, and it happens once the object reaches your character as long as you're still holding down the right trigger. Accio is also just as useful in battle, though, because with the Accio Mastery talent, it can pull multiple enemies in close, setting them up for a close-range cast of, say, Incendio, or bringing them together for a Bombarda or Glacius Explosion. And now we have reached the top five spells in Hogwarts Legacy. And really quick, I just want to say, if you've been enjoying this video, guys, so far, consider hitting the subscribe button, bell icon on, really helps out the channel a lot, and I would certainly appreciate your support. Getting to number five now, we have the Ancient Magic Attack. This is yet another essential spell and can only be activated when the ancient magic meter is filled. You only need to have one segment of the meter filled though, and then you'll be able to unleash a devastating attack that deals massive damage to the targeted enemy and can break through any shield charm. There are multiple unlocks throughout the game to further extend your ancient magic meter and even traits that you can apply to gear as well as upgrades that will help you fill this meter even faster. The biggest benefit it has to some of the other powerful spells in the game is when you have a few of these built up, there's no cooldown between them. Of course, on the other side of that, if your meter completely runs out, you will have to refill it before casting again. But this spell can be used in so many different ways. You can use it to start out a fight and instantly take out one of the enemies from the field, or you can save it for only when you're in trouble, or maybe you want to wait and try to do some big damage on the larger bosses. Also, some of the best animations in the game happen with the Ancient Magic Attack. This is random and it varies based on the enemies that you're fighting. Really, the only spell that can rival the Ancient Magic Attack is the Killing Curse of Vada Kedavra, which takes not the number one spot, the number four spot on our list. The description for Avada Kedavra is the shortest one in the game, and it does exactly what it says it will do on any enemy, regardless of their size or their health. 
which keeps it true to its nature from the source material. This is only balanced by a lengthy cooldown time for the spell, but even with that, Avada Kedavra is absolutely one of the most powerful spells in the game if you're going down the dark path. It's also by far the spell that fans requested the most in the lead up to the game. Frankly, it surprised many of us when we learned that it would not be reserved only for like a finisher spell, but it actually would be a slottable spell that you can cast anytime, of course, once that cooldown refills. And again, no surprise here, but the Dark Arts talent tree, yeah, it's gonna make AK even more overpowered by giving it the ability to instantly take out every single cursed enemy on the battlefield. What's more, there's yet another Dark Arts talent called Curse Sapper, where defeating a cursed enemy restores a portion of your health. So guys and gals, if you've been excited for the Dark Arts and Hogwarts Legacy, you're going to be very, very happy with Avad Kedavra. But what could possibly top the Ancient Magic spells and even the Unforgivables on our list? What is left for the top three? Well, at number three, we have probably the spell you've cast more than any other in the game, Revelio. This is another spell in the essential category, and throughout the game, it's mapped to the left button on your D-pad. Revelio highlights a variety of useful and interactive targets in the world, including hidden objects, puzzle items, loot, enemies, and more. Now, truthfully, you could probably make it through a lot of the game without ever using this spell other than the sections where it's required. But if you're a trophy hunter, if you like to find collectibles, Revelio, 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 everywhere you go, Revelio. For puzzle solving and general exploration, it will be your tried and true spell to reveal secrets and a with solving puzzles. It's also helpful in combat as you can scope out enemies in the area and know exactly what you're up against before the fight begins. There's also no cooldown whatsoever. Plus, you can even use it while riding your broom, making it the only spell in the game that you can cast while flying. Add in the extended radius talent upgrade, it's even more useful when you're flying with all of the points of interest it can reveal. Coming in at number two, we have yet another essential spell, and this one is Stupefy, which has the ability to stun enemies setting up follow-up attacks. In its unupgraded form, it deals no direct damage, but stunned enemies will take extra damage on any follow-up attacks. If you're playing on any difficulty other than hard, it will also break through any color shield charm. Now, if you aren't in the habit of holding Protego after blocking, it's time to start focusing on that because using Stupefy in conjunction with Protego is so incredibly important for managing multiple enemies on the battlefield. Now, we talked a lot about upgrades here today. Upgrading Stupefy with additional talents, yeah, it's going to make it even better. It's going to give it the ability to actually cause damage when it hits and another Dark Arts talent where it can even cause that curse-inducing effect. It's so versatile, and the fact that you can cast it with every single use of Protego makes it incredibly powerful and one that you will absolutely want to master. And at number one on our list of best spells in Hogwarts Legacy, we just hinted at it, we have the essential Shield Charm Protego. Now, you may be surprised to see this one rank above a spell like Avada Kedavra, but the reality is you won't unlock AK until very late in the game, whereas Protego, it's a spell you're going to learn very early on. And again, it is vital to mastering combat in this game. Regardless of which type of build you're playing, there will almost always be moments in the game where you need to use the Shield Charm. And even though the spell is primarily a defensive one, you can also wait until the last possible moment to cast Protego before an impact, and this is going to result in what's known as a perfect Protego. Go. This perfect Protego will instantly damage any melee attackers, but will also reflect back enemy projectiles and even break through shields. There's also no cooldown, and even though some spells are unblockable, using Protego in conjunction with Stupefy and its curse effect, plus the benefits of a perfect Protego, to me, are more than enough to warrant giving it the top spot on our list. And I break down some of my favorite combat tips in the video showing up now on the right side of your screen. Check that one out next. As always, guys, thank you all so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.